Yo, and welcome to Thy Spooge Daily Channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand. We're doing daily 20 minute posts and that's been going on for about a month. Usually on the topic of homeless guy, this or that. And yeah, I don't wanna be homeless for much longer. It's been like six years and I'm tired of answering questions about it, talking about it. Your solution is probably not good and doesn't work, etc. Like, I just don't need to hear about any this or that. Like, I have a job. It's, I've had several jobs, but things like pandemic and this and that have just gotten in the way. Like, there's no doubt that I'll be able to get off the street. It's just, it's a process that takes a certain amount of uninterrupted time. And when I'm forced to quit a job due to horrible management or this or that, it is what it is. I'm not gonna stick with a crap job just because I need to get off the street. As dumb as that sounds to anyone who's not lived on the street before, did you know that homeless people our people. We have things like integrity and values and boundaries and things that we will not tolerate. Just because we're homeless doesn't mean we'll tolerate anything. We are allowed to walk away. We are allowed to have negative opinions about the way people treat us on this or that. Anyway, that's not what this post is about. So I was thinking along the lines of once, so first impressions, it takes like 40 subsequent impressions to balance out the first impression. So first impressions are extremely powerful. So every time I'm forced back down into homelessness. I could live in the car, and if I have the choice to move out of the car, then I'm not homeless. Exact same everything. But if I don't have a choice to do anything else, then I'm homeless. So every time I'm forced into homelessness, is that a real thing? Like, if your boss is intentionally inflicting emotional distress on you and like trying to force you to quit, so-called. Like, have they forced you into homelessness or should you have had some kind of savings or something like that? Like, what can be reasonably expected of a person? Well, most Americans can't cover a $500 emergency, they say, or a $1,000 emergency paycheck to paycheck living. So what does the reasonable person say? Can a boss make their former employee homeless by abusing them and forcing them to quit? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Would it be the family of origin's responsibility to take them in and provide for them? And if they're abusive and force the person to leave the house because they don't want to tolerate the poor treatment anymore? Did they force the person into homelessness? Is there some social contract that says the family of origin has to take care of the homeless person? Because if you ask people, what do you think about giving a homeless person a bus ticket home? Everyone will jump and say, yes, that's exactly the solution. We need to give them a bus ticket home. So, uh, that leaves a lot of room for manipulation from bad actor parents. I've probably covered that on some past topics, some past days. Because I'm not focused on whether, yes or no, someone can be forced into homelessness. It's like, okay, once someone is homeless, there's a deterministic process that happens 
if they are in an existing place, their friends will abandon them or all they'll ask about is, do you have a place to live yet or whatever? Like, the brain resists change. I don't know all the machinery behind this happening, but I think one thing is the brain resists change. So it's painful for people to see something different and B, people are worried about their position. And so now they have they had you as a friend before who was good, productive, good reputation, everything. So it was, it was easy to be friends. Like by being friends, they looked good. They looked more competent, etc. But once you become homeless, it's not obvious that your friendship is beneficial anymore. So now they're friends with some homeless guy. How are you helping them? Well, they've got ladders to climb. Like they can't spend time on a homeless guy anymore. And so now it could be as little as ghosting or as much as actually setting you up to look bad to other people so that it's just a straight up total discard and maybe they can get some virtue for saying like, oh, you, this guy was a bad guy. He did bad things. He had bad opinions and I exposed him and now I get to climb a little bit higher and he's gone. So double win. And if you go to a new town, like everyone's gonna be apprehensive of the newcomer to begin with. You have no social proof, nothing. You might have some reputation on paper, maybe, left over for your new boss, your new management to get an initial impression of you with, but otherwise that's it. And then, Okay, how much savings did you have? Do you have any money after you've moved or you're still in the same place? Like, how much of your normal, like, chosen lifestyle, your bot personality, can you maintain? Probably not as much as you'd like to. So you're not really giving yourself as a first impression to all these new people in this new place or you know, the first impression that you gave everybody now that you can't afford to get your clothes dry cleaned or wear dry clean clothes all the time or go to, you know, your favorite coffee shop and order a bunch of stuff. Maybe now you just order black coffee and like people notice and ask, oh, you're just getting coffee now, huh? Cutting out the sugar, eh, buddy? You know, no, just cutting three or four dollars off my drink. So, and then you're like walking around weird like me. I haven't done my laundry in weeks, even though I started a new job a long time ago, because like the first two or three paychecks just go to catching stuff up, just go to like getting bare essentials that have been gone without. Um, you know, eventually laundry will catch up, but it's one of the lowest priority things. And so now everywhere you go, you're looking a little greasy, a little dis, you know, not quite put together because you're not wearing crispy clean clothes anymore. And so now like days, weeks, months go by, you're making first impressions all around town as you're like getting your paychecks, you're starting to save money, you're starting to get back to where you could think about getting a place, etc. But now all these people have already treated you so shamefully that once you start getting back into your bot personality, you know, you get a new pair of shoes, you get a new belt, you get some new shirts, you know, you're starting to look like a normal housed person again. Maybe you even are renting a room now. You're f doing your laundry every week. You get a new belt, you know, all this stuff, little things. You stay shaved more. Now all these people who have treated you shamefully, like looked at you like you were invisible when you tried to greet them on the street, you know, it may be recognizable people from within the town too who are friendly to everyone and their wife looks at them funny when they ignore you walking past because it's out of character for them to do that. And it's just like, 
you know, you go to the Starbucks, all the baristas know you. They may be wrong. They think you bathe in the bathroom, know you bathe at the gym. But because so many homeless people abuse the bathroom and you're like the only homeless person who's there working all the time, actually being productive, it's like they see you and they see that you're skinny, weak, etc. So even if they're wrong, they don't care. It's like they've got somebody to blame for the bathroom issue. They've got a face to put on the issue. So it's like when you leave the bathroom, they remember, oh yeah, we haven't changed the bathroom code in a while. They say something about it out loud and you feel like incredibly unwelcome. You don't 100% know that that's what they said, but if you go in the next time and the bathroom code is different, you're sure that's what they said. I mean, the probability of that being a coincidence is so small that you hear something that sounds like that the moment you're coming out of the bathroom and then you come back, the bathroom code's changed. It hasn't been changed for like a month or two. Well, you probably heard that and there's a good chance that uh, you're leaving the bathroom reminded them that they need to change the code for whatever reason. What else? I had a bunch of things today up that alley. Because, yeah, and then it's just, like, Karens walk, walking their dog and watching you. And, like, so you work in, you know, you work downtown. You have to go through, like, a private parking lot that's no trespassing. And, like, the woman calls the cops and says, hey, there's a suspicious-looking person trespassing on this property. Is it your property, miss? No, it's not. Well, uh, unless it's your property, we can't really do anything about it. So it's just like, oh, I thought I'd just be a good, a good neighbor and make sure that, well, is it possible that this person is authorized to be on this private property no trespassing like maybe they work in that building or oh i don't know i didn't think of that he just looks very suspicious i just thought you guys should know officer you know what i mean so it's like the police get all these you know good samaritan information about person matching the same description and then so this is one that I notice, like, okay, if you're, like, busted down, homeless looking, you go to Starbucks, this is consistent with people want you to do well but not better than them. I feel like I'm, like, the epitome of the homeless problem at Starbucks, even though I'm basically not even a homeless customer. Like, I don't wash myself in the bathroom I don't go in and not order a drink. Like, I always buy a drink and tip. Like, I don't order ice water or anything like that. Like, I'm the most non-homeless homeless customer there is. But then on the flip side, I'm like the customer that reminds them of the homeless problem the most. And in a way, it's like the less greasy I look, the more I'm probably sneaking into their bathroom and using it as my shower in their mind like man he's barely looking homeless he must really be washing himself hard in our bathroom you know what i mean like i don't have any evidence for that one it's just like i'm the homeless guy who's always there for the last couple months and i've been going in for like six months like there's not a lot of homeless people there there's a couple who go in every now and then there's a rando who goes in and they just like don't buy anything and they're like so polite courteous consider like they're like the most like they give the due care to the homeless people but then i go in there i'm homeless and i just get like the child abuse treatment like the most undesirable customer who could possibly be there it's like familiarity breeds contempt or i look kind of like the uncanny valley of non-homeless where it's like the uncanny valley in in like 3d rendering is where something looks almost human but not quite and it looks like scary and off-putting like it's actually disturbing because it's like pretty close but it's just off so that's the uncanny valley so it's like i'm in the uncanny valley of non-homelessness like 
people see me and know that I'm homeless, other pe- homeless people see me and know that I'm homeless, but I'm like barely like you want to see me and see a normal person, but you see a homeless guy. It's like, it's like I'm a, a fat, unattractive woman when you're drunk. And it's like, you see, like you, and I'm, I'm giving you the signs and it's like, you see, oh, a woman's giving me the signs. I want to get down tonight. And you're like seeing her as a woman, but you're like, no, and she's like this land whale. And you're like, oh, let me get some shots, man. You know what I mean? It's like, in that case, you you want the person of your desire. In most case, people don't want to like me. They want to dislike me. Or like it's their job to like me, but they just don't sort of thing. So, yes, we have a person parking right next to me. So we'll see if I can still concentrate on this. Of course, at the conclusion, right? The last four minutes. So that's like the big one is the Karens. What are all the Karens who like report me to Neighborhood Watch and this and that gonna do when I'm no longer homeless? Like I think it's gonna be their karma is gonna catch up with them somehow. Um, Or like people who, you know, contact homeless outreach services about, oh, there's a homeless guy sleeping in his car over there. Like you better go just like check up on him and then the homeless services come up to me and I'm like, leave me alone. Like, I didn't call you. I don't need your help. Oh, but you're a homeless person where it's our job to help you. Like, did I ask? Well, no, but a concerned neighbor did. Like, oh, this neighborhood, this neighborhood has my best interest in mind or their property value in mind, right? Like, I don't want to deal with anything official. And so everyone who like submits me to a hotline or a database or anything is actually hurting me. It's like, like I said, after like my third paycheck, I might not have to call myself homeless anymore. Does that mean I'll immediately go and get an apartment or lease a van or this or that? I'm so tired of not being able to be productive that I'm gonna do something as soon as I can. Because this situation is just not working for a couple reasons. Like the main thing is I just need some place of privacy where I'm not forced to go to Starbucks every day for internet connection. Like like one possible path is the tinted windows and the mobile service. Then I could find a parking lot, get in the back seat, and just use my mobile internet and be in there with tinted windows, all good. And unlike without tinted windows and people see like a skinny oppressor sitting in the car, like people might think I'm like a big buff threatening person in a car with tinted windows if they can't actually see me. And so they're not going to feel as confident just approaching It'll be more like a no harm, no foul thing. Well, he's not hurting anyone just sitting there. But if they just see like some skinny oppressor guy like me, they're like, oh yeah, we better go uh, collect his karma and make this guy get out of here for all the things that his ancestors did to our ancestors, allegedly. So, what else? There's just so many things coming off of this topic that I wanted to cover. I want to like give it a coherent meaning in our one last minute here. So it's just like, yeah, what happens like when I'm the mayor and everyone has treated me like crap and I have only good to say about the town and like a few people who treated me well, but like just everywhere. It's not that everyone treated me bad. It's that a sample of people everywhere treated me bad. And they're not wrong. And I still want to be part of this town. And they're not wrong for being apprehensive about homeless people. They're wrong in this case, but how can they know that? I can't be mad at that. So anyway, um, thanks for joining. Hopefully you got something out of this. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Take care.